guys, I hope you're all doing well. Apologies that it's been a little while. I don't even have an excuse. I wish that I did. I really feel like I should have one, but yeah, life, life has just gotten in the way and it's been a long time since I actually sat down and filmed a video. So I thought today I would film a little bit of a beauty review, just showing you some of the things that I've picked up over the last couple of weeks and the last couple of months. I haven't really been in that much of a mood for beauty shopping. I've actually bought a lot more kind of clothing or fashion pieces, which I will be doing a video on really, really soon. So I'm going to start with the two skincare pieces, and these actually kind of go together. I think I picked them both up in the Ren Glow and Go. I want to say um, that that was the name of the kit. I can't remember exactly and I threw the box away. But I think it was a glow and go kit. I will pop it down below. Um, you can buy it on ASOS. I found out after I bought it. But anyway. So in that kit I got the Ren Glycoactic Radiance Renewal Mask. As well as the Ren Flash Rinse 1 Minute Facial. Over the past couple of weeks I have had major, major issues with my skin. It's broken out kind of at a level that it hasn't for a couple of years now, I would say. I've had some of the worst breakouts, some of the sorest, most ugliest, horrible little pimples um, all over my chin. I've had them on my forehead, I've had them here on like the insides of my cheeks. My skin was just looking really sore, obviously I had a lot of pimples, but it was looking very grey and dull at the same time. Starting off with the Flash Rinse 1 Minute Facial, I use this kind of every four or five days, I would say. It does say to use it every three days, but my skin is quite sensitive. Both of these products actually say that they're not suitable for sort of overly sensitive skin, um, but my skin's quite sensitive and I haven't really found any problems with them. I just kind of don't use them as regularly as Ren recommend that you would. Um, so every four or five days is enough for me, and it really really works. It's really helped to kind of just lift my skin a little bit more. It's got a bit more of its radiance back, a little bit of a glow, um, and it just feels a lot healthier. It looks a lot healthier. I was kind of, even days where I was feeling fine and I was feeling upbeat and refreshed and everything, um, my skin just made me look kind of ill and it was very grey and very drab and it just didn't have a lot of life in it left. So this really, really helps. The glycolactic Radiance Renewal Mask I use once a week and again I do really really like it I have to say it was something that I wanted to try way back when it does do a really good job of again just kind of perking up the skin giving it a little bit more life and a little bit of a sort of youthful texture and um, it works by kind of getting rid of the top layer of skin so any dry patches that I've had as well from pimples and any little scabs or scarring that I've had go a lot easier when I'm using something like this. Neither of these two products have made my skin any worse. My skin touch wood is um is on its way back to normal. I hope, I don't know what I did or used that made it break out so badly, but these two haven't kind of had any bad effects on it and they've helped it to heal a lot quicker. Moving on to makeup, and I think all of the other bits that I have to talk about are actually makeup. I'm gonna start with the Stila In The Garden eyeshadow palette. I wasn't that sure about this when I first bought it. Obviously it does have a nice selection of neutrals and kind of mossy green colours in the middle here, which I quite like. I've got sort of brownish green eyes and I find them to be really flattering. And you do then get this sort of bright blue, this is called Freesia, um, Rosette, which is this sort of purpley pink, and Juniper as well, which is a greeny sort of bluey turquoise colour. These end three I can't really imagine ever getting any use out of, I'm not really very adventurous. But my eyeshadows, even using them as like an accent colour, I think it's probably going to be a little bit too much for me. But the rest of them I just think are so beautiful. I think if you do have brown eyes and these sort of mossy green shades, really bring them out. I think they look really pretty and especially against fair skin as well as I obviously have. Um, yeah, I find them really flattering. I don't find that the Stila eyeshadows are the most pigmented in the world. They do need a little bit of work, um, a little bit of building up, but they blend really, really nicely. And once they're on the eyelids, I don't find that they move or transfer or fade throughout the day either, which is a problem that I have with the Urban Decay kind of naked um, eyeshadows. I find that they fade quite quickly on me during the day. In the same palette, you also get a Stila smudge stick. I wanted to try these for the longest time. They are this kind of waterproof pencil eyeliner. The shade that I have is Starfish, which is this kind of browny, greeny, again quite a mossy sort of shade, and just smudged underneath the lower lash line. I find it to be really pretty, as a little bit of definition, and it's not the usual kind of black or dark brown eyeliner. I use 
mac coffee um, more often than not, it's kind of my go-to. But this just adds a little bit of extra colour and it's very subtle, very wearable and again because it is waterproof it does not smudge, it does not move from your lash line all day and I find them really really easy to use. I think that Alex from My Covered Bee always uses the shade Lionfish. I think which is like a bit of a brownie sort of bronzy shade so I'm definitely definitely wanted to get my hands on that one after this one because I think they are well worth the hype. So because my skin has been misbehaving quite a lot I also bought a couple of base products to try. The first one is the Bare Minerals Original Foundations. So this is their kind of just original plain and simple loose powder mineral foundation. Oh it's really really messy. Um, I haven't used a mineral foundation powder in a really long time. I tried the Lily Lolo one, um, which is this kind of organic um, mineral brand. I didn't get on with that one at all, personally. It made my skin look really dry, really drab, and it just kind of clung to any dry patches. I do have quite dry skin, um, which obviously isn't the fault of the foundation, but I would recommend that for oilier skin types. This one, however, doesn't seem to do the same. It actually looks quite fresh. And throughout the day, I find that mineral foundation actually begins to look better. Whereas, obviously, liquid foundations, I find it best when they're first applied. And then throughout the day, they can start to oxidise a little bit, start to go a little bit patchy and just not look as flattering on the skin. My only complaint with this is that I bought sort of the miniature size in a little tryout kit. And I think there were five different shades. The fairly light shade was too fair for me, so I picked up the shade light. Um, and if I do want to build it up for a little bit of extra coverage, like around the middle of my face or whatever, I find that it can look a little bit yellowy, sort of orange. Um, which obviously isn't the most flattering thing. It's not the end of the world. I'm hoping that I will be able to get a little bit more wear out of it as the summer comes around and as I begin to look just a tiny little bit more tanned um, I usually go down about a quarter of a shade I would say during summer so I'm very very excited for that um, so yeah I'm hoping to get a little bit more use out of it then but in terms of formula, in terms of finish I really really like this Alongside that in the same kit I also got a sample of the Mineral Veil I don't really get the point of this product, I have to say. I have used it a couple of times and kind of thought, okay, maybe when it's applied on the skin I will begin to see a little bit of difference, I will get what it's all about, but I just don't. If I am using a powder foundation, then I don't expect to need to set it down with powder on top. I don't want to set it down with powder on top. I think it's meant to be sort of a bit of a finishing powder, so you pop it on over the powder foundation just to give you a little bit of radiance a little bit of luminosity, give your skin a little bit more life but I don't find that I really need it, I don't find that I'm ever going to want to use it so I think it might just be a little bit of a fad, I hate to say it. Probably my favourite thing in this whole video is the Amazing Cosmetics Amazing Concealer. I've got this in the shade Fair Golden which has got a really nice peachy kind of um, pinky undertone to it which is what I find is perfect for underneath my eyes. I do have a lot of blueness, a lot of purple kind of discoloration, especially right in the corners. The pigmentation of this stuff is incredible. I've never used such a highly pigmented concealer in my whole life. Um, I do have a lot of discoloration, like I say, around my eyes and also some pimples and blemishes on my face, obviously, recently that I've been covering up as well and I find that this does the job perfectly. I use a tiny, tiny little bit of this for my whole face. It covers everything, um, it lasts all day, it's really waterproof, really sweat proof, it doesn't budge on the skin and it's just the most flawless coverage that I would ever want from a concealer. I highly rate it and even over the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which isn't that great if you have dry skin, I don't find that this cakes at all. It just feels super, super comfortable and really does a brilliant job of giving me that sort of almost flawless appearance, which is what I definitely look for. Paired with the Bare Minerals Foundation, I find that it works really well as well because you can just kind of use this first off after you've moisturised your skin, pop it onto any blemishes, pop a little bit of the Bare Minerals Foundation over the top and it just evens everything out and creates a really nice, smooth, kind of perfected canvas. Lastly, I went to MAC and if you have watched any of my videos before, you will know that I'm not the biggest MAC fan. One thing that I do love from them is their liner selection. As you know, I've already mentioned in this video that I use coffee um, just to line sort of my outer edges of my eyes quite often. 
And this time I picked up a lip pencil. This is in the shade Boldly Bare and I basically got this just to sort of even out my bottom lip a little bit. I don't have the fullest lips, it's something that I've always been a little bit conscious of. I also finally bought the MAC lipstick in Patisserie, I've been wanting to try this for the longest time. I think it looks absolutely amazing in photographs from people. Um, little bit disappointed by it, it's very much like my natural lip colour, which is what I wanted. I wanted it to be a kind of my lips but better blogger cliche um, kind of shade. But I actually don't find that it looks that much different when it's applied. Obviously with any lipstick it's going to look different on everybody. I do think it's a really pretty shade for sort of everyday use. I do still wear it as one of the ones that I keep in my handbag and I can just kind of whip out at any time and touch up if I need to. It's not very high maintenance at all. It doesn't last very long which is something that I find with most MAC lipsticks. I know they're meant to be sort of the best in the industry but for me they just kind of slide off my lips really quickly, the colour doesn't last very long, I'm still getting a lot of daily use out of it, but I probably won't repurchase it. So I think that that is just about everything that I wanted to talk about in this video, I hope that you've enjoyed it, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!